All right, Dragon Ball and anime fans, we're going to step out of the norm with this video and talk about something non Tyler Perry related on the channel. One of my favorite franchises for over a decade now has definitely been the uh, Dragon Ball series. And I really enjoy the debates that I see online sometimes between fans when it's not about, you know, who can power up the most and things of that nature. In this video, just know this is just my opinion. I'm going to be talking about which form I like better. Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, aka Super Saiyan Blue, or Super Saiyan 4. One form being from Dragon Ball Super, the other one being from Dragon Ball GT. No, I don't care about GT not being canon. This is not a debate about canonosity. It's like, oh, well, GT isn't canon so, canon, so Super Saiyan 4 doesn't count. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm just talking about which form I enjoy the most, especially with the uh, Super Dragon Ball Heroes promotional anime shorts, if you will. Uh, we bring in, oh, God, the disappointing fight between Super Saiyan 4, Go, uh, Zeno Goku, and Capsule Corp. Super Saiyan Blue Goku. I don't even want to get into how disappointed I was in that fight. When 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 Hercule versus Cell was more entertaining than those two Gokus fighting, you know something is wrong. But in any case, <laughs> um, honestly, from the start of this video, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Let me know in the comments if there are any other anime or any other nostalgia-like videos you want me to touch upon outside of Tyler Perry, of course, and I would enjoy doing it. But other than that, just know that I like Super Saiyan 4 better than Super Saiyan Blue. And honestly, I do like it better than Super Saiyan God as well. I, I guess this, the reasoning is it's not about power, not about which form is stronger than the other. That's once again, not what the video is about. I just like the lore behind Super Saiyan 4. The fact that Super Saiyan 4, I remember back in the day, I think... I got into Dragon Ball during 6th grade. That was around early 2000s. I think I got into the Dragon Ball series right when the Kid Buu and Fusion Saga were... Yeah, I think it was like... I remember my first VHS tape was um, Fusion The Last Saiyan. That was the four-episode fight between Vegito and Super Buu. And yeah, basically I got into Dragon Ball around that time so right before the kid boo saga basically vegeto fighting boo then getting absorbed and then you know goku winning with the spirit bomb and oob and you know just a rough cut of how i got into dragon ball but um yeah super saiyan 4 you know i went through gt was the first dragon ball series i followed from start to finish obviously when the vhs's came out i got each one as they came out so Maybe that's probably why, but at the same time, let, let me just kind of break it down to categories. During the time, you know, when Super Saiyan 4 came out, I remember Beckett Dragon Ball magazines were a thing, just like Pokemon. I actually still have all my magazines. And, um, you know, in some of the uh, articles about the different Super Saiyan forms and whatnot, th there was a article talking about how Super Saiyan 4 was like the true version of Super Saiyan 2 with the Great Golden Azaru or Great Golden Grade 8 being the true form of a Super Saiyan, which at the time, keep in mind, this before uh, channels like Geekdom and Unrelented Gaming and Mazako X, who are, I would think, are my top three favorite Dragon Ball YouTubers. And um, they actually, in the article, and it made sense because, you know, the uh, Ozaru or Great 8 was said to be the true form of a Saiyan. So the Golden monkey or ape would be the true version of a super saiyan which goes back to vegeta's filler uh scene where he had the thought about what the true legendary super saiyan was like you know 1000 years ago blew up himself and the planet he was on and we saw what looked to be a great golden monkey so during that time it's like oh my god so when goku became the great golden ape and g ape and gt when he was fighting baby vegeta that was the true super saiyan and then when he, he controlled that power and became like a ozaru humanoid saiyan hybrid that was the true version of Super Saiyan 2. And plus it's like, oh, well, I mean, 2 plus 2 equals 4, so that makes sense. Keep in mind, this was my logic when I was an early teenager. Nowadays, I know better, but it sounded good to me back when I was a kid. So don't, you know, go at me in the comments. But the reason I really like Super Saiyan 4 is because of the fact that it looks drastically, drastic, drastically different from what we're used to, which is the standard spiky blonde golden hair. 
I mean, it, it just looks pretty badass. I love it. I mean, the fact that Goku has a tail again, he's an adult, not a kid. His hair, you know, looks, excuse me, not overly exaggeratedly long like Super Saiyan 3. I remember as a kid, Super Saiyan 3 was my favorite form, but I, as I got older, I gravitated more to Super Saiyan 2 just because I love the spikier hair than the regular Super Saiyan. I think the lightning aura is the thing that really got me. And then the fact that it's a hundred times increase over base form. But, um, and because Super Saiyan 3, as I got older, I realized it had so many drawbacks and it was a form that really never won a fight when you really, outside of movies, it never really won a fight and that was ridiculous. But um, looking at Super Saiyan 4, just the fact that to me, Super Saiyan 4 represents a Saiyan reaching the peak of their power. You know, mastering the Ozaru form, um, combining that with the normal appearance of a Saiyan for this very badass um, hybrid. And then the fact that, uh, at least going back to what Bulma was saying when she was tuffalized, I like that word tuffalized on planet Tuffle, of uh, the blood waves from the moon, well, excuse me, the earth being used in place of the full moon for planet Tuffle, the blood waves will be generated and sent to baby, but none will be sent to Goku, meaning that Goku's power will be depleted while baby's power will be even greater than before, you know, revitalizing him. So to me, it almost felt like, you know, Super Saiyan 4 was like an extended version of Ozaru because if I'm not mistaken, a, a pan was the one that got Goku to gain control of himself while he was the great golden ape. And then while looking up at the earth, you know, that was kind of like the full moon, so to speak, that along with his uh, ability to regain control of himself is what allowed him to transform into Super Saiyan 4. So I, I feel like, you know, the fact that, you know, for a lack of a better phrase, no pun intended, the moon, I mean, it just brought things full circle. Like, you know, you have a Saiyan, he goes ape, then he turns to a legendary Super Saiyan. Then by controlling that power, he becomes Super Saiyan 4. I feel like it really harkens back to the lore and the legend of the Super Saiyan and what the true form of a Saiyan is. So to me, Super Saiyan 4 is just more badass. Switching over to Dragon Ball Super, Super Saiyan God is interesting, but I just feel like the lack of a... I guess you could say, uh, I, I get it. Sometimes simplicity works best, but when you pump up a form to be like this God level, you know, tier power, Super Saiyan God, I remember when it was first released, I was so disappointed. It, it was just a slender version of Goku who had red hair and his skin tone was a little bit darker. That's pretty much it. I mean, it's just one of those things where I think the one thing I learned about that is like, it really taught me that you really shouldn't judge anything until you see it in motion. Like seeing like the, the official artwork and all is one thing, but actually seeing the form and movement and whatnot is another. And I, I, I did enjoy it for what it was when I saw Battle of Gods, but it really didn't do much for me because Super Saiyan God was treated like an afterthought, at least in the anime, uh, when Super Saiyan Blue showed up. Super Saiyan Blue, blue is my favorite color. And when I first saw the form, I'm like, okay, but... It's just like a palette swap. That's it. And I I, I mean, it, the form grew on me as Super went on. But let me just say that my favorite transformation was Super Saiyan Rose from uh, Goku Black. Um, Since Ultra Instinct isn't a Saiyan form, I, I'm not counting that just so you know. But yeah, I mean, Super Saiyan Blue. I mean, the fact that Blue got was number one used way too much it was used way too much the fact that it got his ass whooped so many times didn't help matters at all and when you really think about it let's see super saiyan god didn't defeat viewers super saiyan blue technically lost to frieza i mean because when you think about it goku was the goku beat frieza but then sorbet interfered and then you know vegeta stepped in and won but that was only because Golden Frieza's power was depleted. Not to mention, Vegeta didn't finish the job before Frieza blew up the planet. Then Whis had to use the temporal do-over, and then Goku got the kill. But keep in mind that Golden Frieza was more powerful than an individual Super Saiyan Blue at that point in time during Resurrection F. The only reason Frieza lost was because, similar to Super Saiyan 3, his power was quickly defeated while using that form. 
so Frieza was strong. So if Frieza would have trained more and pretty much pulled a goal, a true golden Frieza, like he did later on during the uh, Tournament of Power art, he would have succeeded. I, I'm going to be honest here. You know, we theorized that if Goku and Vegeta fought together, there was a chance that they might defeat Beerus. But I figured that if Frieza had full control over his powers and abilities, I think that he might have been able to defeat Goku and Vegeta without fusion, of course, even if they worked together. But yeah, I feel like, you know, Golden Frieza whooped Blue's ass. The only reason Goku won and then Vegeta stepped in was because of Vegeta, uh, Frieza's power was depleted at that point. So really, Frieza was on the verge of losing regardless because his batteries were running low. Then you move over to the Goku Black arc. Blue, once again, was easy to... Easily defeated by Rose in their first battle. Uh, Goku getting enraged and then pounding on uh, Zamasu and Goku Black was great, but then it quickly was cut short, no pun intended, when his, uh, Goku Black's energy blade got even stronger and defeated him. Then you had Super Saiyan Rage, which is, was cool when it first appeared. I mean, Trunks' transformation was badass, but the lack of explanation behind it really left a lot to be a left a lot to be desired. Then Super Saiyan Blue Vegito, which was awesome to see, was a disappointingly short fight, which was nothing but fan service, and didn't even get the job done because here we have Trunks somehow learning the Spirit Bomb and turning his sword into energy, and yeah, so Super Saiyan Blue didn't do squat during the main arcs. Yes, in the Tournament of Power, we see Blue a lot, and it really... Once again, Blue was overshadowed by Ultra Instinct. Yes, we got Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, but, I mean, Blue was an afterthought when Ultra Instinct came into play. So, really, Super Saiyan Blue, it was just too much. It was just overly used, and the fact that it really didn't get a lot of victories really leaves a lot for it to be questioned. I mean, then the explanation behind it at first is like, Oh, it's a super, what is it? A Super Saiyan mixed with the powers of a Super Saiyan God. Okay, that's cool. And then it's about, you know, having a calm mind and the fact that Super Saiyan Blue is easier to maintain than even the other Super Saiyan forms. Okay, that actually makes sense, Goku. I mean, unlike God, it doesn't have a time limit. Uh, Super Saiyan Blue is supposed to represent like a tranquility going by the color choice of blue, you know, um, body and mind truly working as one, hence why Goku is able to utilize the Kaioken while in blue form. But then when we get to like the manga, which is by extension an entirely different thing than the actual anime, we later learn that Super Saiyan Blue is very heavy on energy so using the form depletes a lot of the user's energy which makes no flipping sense because that was the reason blue was a favorite form over god not just because of the whole time limit thing but because blue is supposed to represent a true mastery of body and mind combined as one to utilize saiyan power and god power I don't even want to get into it, but Super Saiyan Blue, I just hated the fact that it was glossed over in the movie, but I'm like, oh, if they're redoing the Resurrection F in the Dragon Ball Super series, maybe they'll stretch it out, but in a good way where we get more explanation as to how Goku and Vegeta obtain these forms, um, you know, and maybe the fact that we never get multipliers doesn't help either because we don't know how powerful God is compared to Blue. I mean... At face value, you would think that Super Saiyan Blue would be a 50 times increase at minimum because when you think about it, Super Saiyan God is kind of like the new base form for the Saiyans at this God tier level. And then Super Saiyan Blue is simply a Super Saiyan God that went Super Saiyan. But then you throw in the Dragon Ball Heroes uh, kind of... Uh, continuity where saying beyond god is a thing and where even base goku has the power of super saiyan god so when he turns into a regular super saiyan oh my gosh that means super saiyan goku is 50 times stronger than the goku that fought beerus but then on top of that you got super saiyan blue and super saiyan like we don't know the multipliers it's, it's ridiculous but in any case super saiyan 4 Old Kai talked about his knowledge of Super Saiyan 4 because he knew that if Goku controlled himself as a great golden ape, he could become a Super Saiyan 4, hinting at Goku not being the first Super Saiyan 4. 
but we really don't get much explanation on that. And then same thing with Yamoshi as the original Super Saiyan God, which I do think eventually they'll probably cover him. Maybe in the movie he'll get mentioned, but I don't know. But overall, you know, I just feel like Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue were just ass pulls so Goku and Vegeta could fight at the level of these gods, you know, because they introduced a new world of gods and deities in Dragon Ball Super as a whole. Not to say I dislike the forms, because to be honest, I really loved when Super Saiyan God was utilized in the anime. I mean, it didn't show up until like episode, uh, the, the, what episode was that? One, was it 100 or something? I forgot. Basically, it was the episode where Goku fought with Hit against Dispo and Koichi, that little dude on the Pride Troopers. But in the manga, Super Saiyan God received more love being used when Goku fought Hit, briefly when Goku fought Future Trunks. Then him and Vegeta both used Super Saiyan God when fighting Zamasu and Goku Black. And then he used it against Topo. But yeah, Super. if I already, yeah, I honestly think that I like Super Saiyan God more than Super Saiyan Blue. Yeah, I kind of do. But in any case, I feel like Super Saiyan 4 just represents the true power of a Saiyan. While Super Saiyan God, while, you know, what is it, the Namekian Book of Legends, which is another plot device that was never brought up again. If we knew more about the forms and stuff like that, the legends behind it, I would like it. Like we do know the legend about what, six Six good-hearted Saiyans infusing their power into one, yada, yada, yada. But, I mean, if they gave more explanation, I think I would have liked it a lot more. But, to me, Super Saiyan 4 just looks more badass. Uh, I just like the uh, feeling and knowledge that a Saiyan truly has to master the Great Golden 8 form to utilize the Saiyan's true power. So, to me, Super Saiyan 4, while non-canon, is truly the true form of a Saiyan. Or at least Super Saiyan don't get me started on Legendary Super Saiyan. That's an entirely different thing. While Super Saiyan God just seems like, you know, I mean, uh, it, I mean, it's just, I, I don't think it really compares, in my opinion. When I think about Saiyans, that's just me. Because when I think of Saiyans, I think Great Ape Super Saiyan. But Super Saiyan God, that's like, I don't really, when I think Saiyan, I don't think gods, you know? Like, their power rivals that or surpasses that of gods. But I don't, I mean... Again, I don't want to ramble on, but that's just my thoughts. So in the comment section below, uh, between Super Saiyan 4 and then Super Saiyan Blue, and you can include Super Saiyan God if you want to, which form do you personally prefer? And as I said at the beginning of this video, if you enjoyed it, let me know your comments uh, below. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know if there are any more anime-related videos you want me to do. And for the majority of the fans on the channel and followers, these videos are just made for fun in my downtime. They don't hinder or push back any of my Tyler Perry content so if you see me occasionally upload non Tyler Perry related content don't worry it doesn't slow down my episode reviews or anything I think it's just fun for me to take a trip down memory lane and also to expand the channel so other viewers and possibly new subscribers can see that you know I like random things sometimes nerdy things but they might enjoy it too so thanks so much for listening and I'll talk to you all soon